So as I was editing my last video on Tiffany A. Hanyard, which of course was an absurd story because all the stories about her are completely absurd and ridiculous. This one in particular was about a public comment meeting where people were supposed to be able to come and ask her questions, question her on how she's spending the money, but she ended up having a private security guard trick people into going into the basement where they were distracted in that basement, essentially false imprisoned in that basement until she adjourned the meeting to avoid criticism, I thought, you know what, it's not going to be a while before I revisit this person. I'm, I'm going to have to let it go because she's not going to do anything as crazy. Well, it turns out as I'm editing that video, another insane story broke. And in today's story, we're going to talk about how a bank is actually going to repossess a bunch of different vehicles from the city of Dalton, including multiple police vehicles, because despite the fact that the board appropriated the money to to service the loan, Tiffany appears to have spent that money God knows where, possibly she stole it, and now the police department is going to have their vehicles repossessed. But before we get into that, thank you to everybody signed up on actualjusticewarrior.com slash join. Oh, give me the money. Give you, give me the money. Okay. And thank you to the podcast listeners, Spotify, Apple, and Google's podcasting platform. Our financial turmoil in South Suburban Dalton after a bank says the village failed to make a massive payment. Yeah, the threat now, tow trucks could be arriving soon to repossess some village vehicles. You know, I say it almost every time I cover a Tiffany A. Henyard story because it's so absurd, it's so ridiculous that you might actually think I'm not reporting on reality. You might actually think I'm reporting on a sketch comedy show, except for the fact that if this were actually in a sketch comedy show, the writers would be canceled and possibly deported into the sea because of all the negative stereotypes that they're reinforcing. So we have the super mayor, and I've documented so many different abuses from her that honestly, you just gotta go watch the previous videos. I'll leave a playlist in the description, but it involves hiring a sex offender, misappropriating tens of thousands of dollars for personal vacations, all this crazy stuff. And she's doing all this, living this lavish lifestyle, living off the the taxpayer doll while not paying the basics, while not making her own car payments, or at least the car payments for the city of Dalton. We quite literally have a welfare queen that is not covering the basics while she's living in all of this luxury. Some of those vehicles being threatened with repossession include Village of Dalton police cruisers and accessories that the village financed back in 2019, much like the one right behind me. Tonight, some Village of Dalton trustees and their legislative council are calling for answers and accountability and everybody needs to know where this money went because the payments were actually appropriated by the legislature and Tiffany A. Hainard never spent it on what it was supposed to be spent on. And now we're seeing police cars on the cusp of being repossessed. In yet another shock to Village of Dalton trustees, a letter falling on their desks dated February 14th. Representatives from Kansas State Bank threatening to repossess 13 village vehicles, saying more than $76,000 is overdue and climbing. The Board of Trustees approved payment in May of 2023. But where that loan payment went that was due nine months ago is anyone's guess. So just think about this. They owe $76,000. The board actually appropriated that $76,000. They're nine months backed up. But Tiffany A. Haynard is famous for spending a ton of taxpayer money on her own personal lavish vacations, including $67,000 within an only four-month span. Township credit card records show Henyard and other officials spent more than $67,000 on trips to Portland, Austin, Atlanta, and New York City. Many of the flights were first class. Where she traveled to Atlanta, Georgia, stayed in a five-star hotel the Four Seasons, traveled to New York City, spent $13,000, and also went to Portland and Oakland. So were the accommodations. In Atlanta, Henyard and her team stayed at the Four Seasons Hotel, costing taxpayers more than $9,000. In New York, the bill came to $13,000. By the way, this doesn't even count the fact that she also had a lavish Vegas vacation. By the way, she also bought first class tickets round trip to all of these trips because God forbid she ride coach, she's better than you. But I should have to sit up here and break all this down. It's when trustees out. refused to pay a big block of bills this week, the mayor accused them of putting vital city services in jeopardy. We need receipts to understand 
what's going on. And this is all stuff that she expects to be paid by the taxpayer. And what I think happened here, if I'm being perfectly honest, is that the board of trustees refused to reimburse her for this. And the reason why they gave that they would not reimburse her is because she wouldn't provide any receipts. She wouldn't articulate what the governmental purpose of these trips were so they didn't appropriate the money. And that money is theirs about what they appropriated for the loan. And again, that's just the four month period. And all of a sudden her tickets and all her travel and all that ended up getting paid, but the police cars didn't get paid off. Lawyers for the bank now warning the village pay up or be ready for repossession agents to take the vehicles, which includes six police cruisers. So six police cruisers in the city of Dalton are going to be repossessed. And for those of you who aren't aware, Dalton has a small police department. It's only a city of 20,000 people. That's not that big. That means they don't have a lot of police cruisers to begin with, and six of them are on the cusp of repossession. Now, I want you to remember the other Tiffany A. Haynard stories that we were talking about, how she spent like $30,000 to make billboards advertising herself to put them on the highway, how she's been paying for a security detail that cost her a million dollars more than the previous administration, including insane hours of overtime to protect herself, to protect her personally or how she's putting her name on all of these vehicles as a way of campaigning for herself, or the calendar that she ended up putting out that, again, features photos of her. All of these different things Tiffany A. Haynard is spending money on, and taxpayer money, as has been proven out repeatedly on this channel and by the investigative reporting of the local news over there, and yet they're not paying the loans, and again, that money was appropriated to Tiffany A. Hainard. And by the way, in our previous video, we showed another dispute about other vendors not being paid. So this isn't even the first instance of this. At the end of the day, vendors are not being paid. Board approved it. The vendors are not being paid. How about you be a good leader, bring RFPs to the forefront. So not just us, but the residents and everybody else in America know how the money is being spent. Now, what's amazing is that in response to that criticism for those unpaid vendors, which again was only an argument from last week, Tiffany decided to play the race card, but most of the council in the city of Dalton, the whole board of trustees, are black people, so she had to question their blackness because they're trying to take down Tiffany A. Haynard, who again is spending all this crazy money on personal lavish luxuries and whatnot and not covering the basics like, you know, paying off the police cars for your police department. Y'all should be ashamed of y'all y'all black, y'all are black. And y'all sitting up here beating and attacking on a black woman that's in power. Y'all should be shade of yourself. Yeah, that's not a joke. That's how she actually responded to the previous criticism before this letter was issued by the bank, which again was issued on February 14th, just a couple of days ago from the time that I'm recording and hope to release this video, which just goes to show you how out of control this person is and how power mad she is and how much she does not care about the taxpayers, even though she says she's the only one doing work for them and all her vacations were to support them and show her love for the people but everything we do we do for the people but we under attack we getting scrutinized in the media for what loving on the people showing them that they matter to us we going through the fires for y'all but the thing is this situation could not be more clear it could not be more cut and dry Tiffany A. Haynard was appropriated the money and she has not issued those payments despite the fact that she is obligated to and this is likely due to the fact that she spent the money in other places. Remember, the city of Dalton, a town of 20,000 people, has had a $6 million deficit under Tiffany A. Haynard total throughout her administration, which is a ton of money while she's doing all these crazy trips and whatnot, while she pulls in a salary from being on the Thornton Township Board of Supervisors and the mayor of Dalton of almost $300,000. As unpaid bills by the village have come to light, WGN Investigates has uncovered exorbitant spending on lavish trips and experiences by Hangard and her allies, including a trip to Vegas that cost more than $12,000 the same month the loan payment was due. Again, I'm not crazy. That's the Vegas trip that I referenced earlier in this video, and that Vegas trip's total was $12,000. $12,000 the very same month that they appropriated money to her office that she was supposed to use to pay off these vehicles. 
and she didn't pay it off, yet she went to Vegas. And if you don't remember, her first class ticket costs almost $4,000 on its own. They show township taxpayers also spent money on the Vegas trip on everything from steak dinners to hotels and $3,741 just on Henyard's round trip flight. On top of that, the trip cost $12,000 to the city of Dalton, according to this report, but she's also the head of the Thornton Township Board of Supervisors, and an investigation found that she also made charges to that taxpayer purse over for Thornton Township for the same exact trip. So who knows how much money this trip actually costs. But just to the average taxpayer in Dalton, this fun weekend away in Vegas at a cost of $12,000 should be gut-wrenching because the median income in Dalton is $25,000. So she spent half of what the average resident makes in a year in Dalton on a trip to Vegas just for fun, eating the high life, going to fancy restaurants and all that. Village of Dalton trustees going head to head with Henyard at meetings, calling for transparency so residents know where taxpayer dollars are going. We need receipts to understand what's going on. They're in charge of overseeing finances, but say the mayor has restricted them from access to those, leaving them mostly in the dark. So we talked about the fact that the super mayor realized that the biggest problem with her financial disclosure statements is that she was doing financial disclosures, and she's even hiding the receipts, how the money is being spent from her own board of supervisors, the equivalent of her city council, for the city of Dalton. This woman is a criminal, pure and simple. These are crimes. She's misappropriating funds, stealing thousands, if not millions, and lining her own pocket. She's also hiring people to do jobs and scamming them. On top of that, several trustees telling WGN Thursday they're now hearing from vendors that say they were hired for work and never paid. More expenses the board was not aware of. They have no idea what she's doing with the money. On top of that, I just want to point out that cars in the city of Dalton have a very strange relationship because there's this wonderful segment, and I think it is so good for people out there to watch, where they talk about Tiffany A. Haynard leasing a Chevy Tahoe. I sat here and looked at a lease. The child's paying $149,000 for one of them trucks. You make absolute, that's like when you're 19 years old and you go get a car and the interest rate 27%. That makes absolutely no sense. You're Please not making facts. great finance. Excuse me? Please stay facts. But let me tell you, here it is, dated December 27th, 2022. The cash price of a 2023 Chevy Tahoe, $93,216.71. Interest in APR, $55,929.49. And spending more than $55,000 above sticker price in order to do so, and how she expects them to pay it. Total lease price, $149,146.20. Tell me if it's not facts, because your signature is all on it. I don't see that. Okay, but you want to put more facts? I don't. All right. I'll, I'll but at the, end, at the end of the finish. day, it's not about going back and forth with you. It's about making financial decisions that is in the benefit of everybody and just not one person. And you can't seem to understand that. Have a great day. Now, what's amazing is in the beginning of that clip, they actually talk about how if they allow this to go on, they're not going to be able to afford the everyday things that they're expected to pay for as a city. And that prophecy has been fulfilled in spades with this situation right here. But at the end of the day, nobody comes here to argue with you. Nobody at all. There are bills that we have the right to take off. We have the right to make decisions about. You say that you're running it at the end of the day, because this is going to be the narrative. When we go broke, you're going to say, I wasn't even on the bank account. The trustees did it. When at the end of the day, you're making decisions and spending money and then get mad when we don't approve it because it's not financially sad. But again, this woman will get a vehicle for her own enjoyment on the taxpayer purse, overpay to the tune of $55,000, but won't make the basic payments, which by the way, are in and around the cost of the interest on that leased vehicle for the police vehicles to keep them on the streets. They're about to get repossessed. How much more ghetto could you possibly be? Y'all forget I am the leader. They want to hear from the mayor. If y'all ain't learned that yet. The mayor, not the trustees that don't do nothing.
that only run their mouth. This is a kleptocracy, pure and simple. Now, I know I always get these comments about how the people of Dalton voted for this. And while they did initially elect Tiffany A. Haynard, I want to point out that they collected enough signatures for a recall, got a recall petition on the ballot, voted her out of office, but Tiffany hired a lawyer. That lawyer got the recall overturned. So these residents have already voted her out of office. They've already shown that they don't want her, and she's just turned the damn place into a kleptocracy. Like, I know Illinois has the most convictions for corruption since the year 2000, quite literally the most corrupt state in the entire union, but this is beyond the pale. This is absurd. And remember, the only thing that she's getting investigated for as of right now that we know of, that is public, is by the state attorney general because she donated money from the Thornton Township, a board that she sits on, and by the way, the co-chair of her charity is also on that board, to her own personal charitable organization. But even that's not getting her criminally investigated. What's getting her criminally investigated, or the charity investigated, is that she never filed the forms to make it a legitimate charity. So she donated money from the taxpayer to her own personal organization, financed, by the way, tens of thousands of dollars worth of expenses for the charity, and at no point in time did she do what was necessary to register the charity in a legitimate way. So it's a fraudulent cancer charity that she's siphoning off taxpayer dollars to. And by the way, we should not be surprised by this. Tiffany A. Hannard was arrested in Chicago about eight years ago, so maybe four to six years before she was elected mayor the first time, for breaking into cars. She is a thief through and through. That is who she is. She's just gone on a grander scale. She's doing it in the halls of government. So what we have right here is this thuggish, ghetto trash person who can't pay her basic bills and is living like a welfare queen off the taxpayer dime. And by the way, if you speak out against her, if you cause her problems, then she'll send her goons to bust up your business as she's also done. And yet she still hasn't been arrested by the FBI. And yet she was still invited by the Biden administration administration to a mayor summit so he could meet her. Well, you know, we got the mayor here. I mean, meeting with the president of the United States. Everyone's seen a picture. I mean, that's a big deal. That that is great promotion for this city, for this town. Look, this story is absolute insanity through and through. It's craziness. And the fact that she has been able to escape scrutiny for so long, the fact that it took forever for the national media to pick up on what we were talking about here on Black Conservative Perspectives channel, Greg Foreman, and on Nate the Lawyer's channel is kind of insane. And now that it's getting the national attention, we're seeing all these other things where a new scandal breaks each and every day. And yet there are no federal investigators, no criminal charges, no raids on her office. I think it's coming soon. And don't get me wrong, even though it's insane and honestly shows the rot and corruption in the state of Illinois, the story is still unbelievably hilarious because she's that absurd of a human being. So I am still entertained by it, but it's kind of gallows humor because these kind of people are in power in local governments because not that many people pay attention to the local governments. And as you could see, you could essentially get away with losing as long as you have the shield of being in office and being a strong black woman who can call everybody racist, including other black people, for daring to question you. But hey, those are just my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. If you like this video, then show them by leaving a like. Subscribe for more content. Follow me on my social media. Support me via the support links in the description of this video. This has been me talking about the police vehicles potentially being repossessed in Dalton. Till next time.